What is up, YouTube? It's your boy Lunar, and uh, we chilling, my boy. What's this? I love find ever since I reacted. Let me go back. Let me go back to to big screen, bro. Ever since I reacted to that one video, what's that nigga name? Chicken, a uh, retro chicken? No, flat top chicken. Um, all these damn fucking uh nerdy black videos been popping up, and so I've been saving them to like you know react with y'all, man. This is this is hilarious. Uh, as you know, your favorite nerdy chocolate black man. Uh, this shit is fucking, I don't know, bro, like, cause I see both sides, right? And I even seen something where, you know, people, one, one dude I seen on TikTok, I want to say, he does the hood JJK video, shouts out to him. Everybody's always go-to is like, y'all were Naruto running and powering up like a Super Saiyan. He was like, yeah, and we were kids, bro, like get the fuck out of y'all's head and he's right like we bro i didn't do it because i got picked on i got picked on about watching anime and shit so early in my life to where i was just like i was so in tune with the world and how they treated us and and i and especially love empowering just because my dumb ass so like I, I i hid the anime super well right but I will wear my Power Ranger Morphers to school and shit. Bro, still to this day, I, I pick a day. Like, one, sometimes I just want to feel like him. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I just want to feel like him. Get what I'm saying? So I put one of these bad boys on or walk around with one of these motherfuckers just wishing a motherfucker would try. Just wishing a motherfucker would. You get what I'm saying? So... That's me now. So picture a little young poo walking around, little baby lunar, and I had this motherfucker on that day, man. I you couldn't tell me nothing, boy. Boy, listen, boy, listen, boy, 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 listen, man. You couldn't tell me shit, boy. And mother and listen, hating ass niggas, bro. This is what I hate about hating ass niggas, bro. They would see a young black kid happy just happy because his pops finally got him one they had steal that motherfucker bro listen they stole this one out my fucking elementary school you know i don't know what you know certain elementary schools in the south they had like the cubby halls things and it was like a locker and they would put all everybody's bags you put in your cubby thing for school and this high i knew niggas was watching me I would have my Game Boy Vans in the top pocket and have my Morpher at the bottom pocket of my backpack, right? They always stole my Morphers, bro. And I remember one time I wore it. So the first time I did it, it was in my fourth grade locker. And I seen the nigga this. I seen the nigga. He was just back there and shit. And he, the, he was able, he stole my fucking Power Ranger Morpher in class. And lied about it and was able to get home with that bitch. And I'm sitting there telling the teacher, like, check his shit, bro. She was not going, man. Oh, man, and let me let me not say it. Let me not pull the race card. She was a hating ass hold on. But anyway, a motherfucker seen me wearing this, bro. And I didn't even wear it to school. I wore it to the skater rig, bro. And I'm skating with this on. And then one of the referees going to tell me to put it in a locker, bro. So I went to put it in a locker. And I, and I didn't have the qu a quarter on me. Bro, I turn around and not even a minute late. Bro, I was turned around to go get a quarter at the quarter machine. They stole that motherfucker, bro. They be hating on a bro. Uh, man. If you black and happy, bro, niggas would steal your shit just to see you suffer, bro. Niggas ain't shit. And the motherfuckers didn't even like pirates. They just stole it because I was I had it and was happy, bro. Niggas ain't shit, bro. Anyway, I say that to tell you this. I always hit like my like I didn't really hot people knew I fucked with anime but I wore the shirts and stuff but I didn't Naruto run and stuff but at the same time they go back to what dude uh the hood JJK dude was saying we were kids so like yes like that y'all picked on us and stuff and now that it's cool y'all want to like the shit and it's just so weird the, the the dynamic of how people is about anime and stuff now 
when back then nobody was like it's just so weird so when i see all these videos now about like black women liking black nerds or they or the, they didn't like black nerds or black men only the uh, black nerds only want white women and shit like i get both sides but at the same time it's just like i get what they're saying to a degree because now black nerdy girls are starting to speak out about black dudes not liking them but it's just like did you make yourself known because like bro me thinking back to high school if a nerdy black girl came up and spoke to me or was friends every time let me just let me just say this from my point of view every time i was friends with a nerdy black girl she only liked white dudes she hated black dudes she hated black dudes didn't look us didn't like us thought we were xyz still to this day even when i go to cons and stuff the only time i seen a black nerdy girl with a black nerdy dude was when i went to dream con and that was so far and few in between i'm lying but it was I, just like walking around it though it wasn't i didn't see a lot of it and it's dream con like i saw a bunch of niggas you know spitting on spitting game and stuff but a lot of the times it was just like you had groups of people with their group and their click and stuff and then you had the random couples walking around but like the actual black like bro then i see it i did not see it so i say all this to say that y'all y'all got like y'all gotta stop being so hard on nerdy black dudes and listen to them because the trauma is there like a lot of dudes don't heal from that like and i see one video where a girl was talking about um you know he hated stuff and he hate black women and um he needs to heal but how can he heal when every time he tries to talk about it you don't take accountability and not necessarily like you have to take accountability but like just say like if he made a facebook post like i know like shit i'd make a facebook post and say i actually i did make a facebook i don't know i said something like uh all y'all niggas are like anime now you need to apologize to me because y'all niggas ain't shit and it it blew up in my city, bro. And they was and people was for real, cause like I never he I never hid the fact that I like this shit. But y'all used to talk shit, and so it's just like I was like, y'all gotta take accountability for this shit, cause y'all gotta start right, bro. And it be it's so many folks that you will write it, my old Facebook before it got deleted. It's so many folks that used to write me about anime and getting on, and so many girls that were writing me saying like oh did you watch this this is so dope i didn't know anime was like this i didn't know they had love stories and this that and the third i'm like yeah bitch they do they do and this shit is lit and they have better storytelling than whatever bullshit black movie that you watch I'm not saying that black movies are shit but majority of them we're all just fucking slaves and i get tired of that shit i'll get tired of watching black movies and we have to be a fucking slave or some nigga shit and it's just like bro that's why i loved what was that black disney movie we were superheroes like i'm so tired of racist shit in the movies and i'm so tired of fucking I, I i hate that like all our shit have to be something like that and it's like yeah i get that as a black director and all this stuff and i love that they're doing that but like it's so much my brain can take of that shit that negativity where i can like before i can like just like enough is enough like but i but what i'm getting at is like i love like what was that damn move up up and away that shit bro i was in love with that fucking disney movie because it was the first time besides black panther and the fucking black power ranger and the yellow power ranger from season two and the red power ranger from turbo it was the first time well besides power rangers that that i think about it Besides Power Rangers, because Power Rangers was the... Bro, do y'all know the first time a black superhero was on television was Power Rangers? That's insane. The first time... And, I'm, and I know people going to be like, but what about Meteor Man? That's a movie. And even still, it took them so much to even get that to be in the theaters. Don't even get me started on that. But the first time little black kids could see a black superhero on television was a uh, fucking power rangers so for me to go from power rangers 
all the way to up up and way that came out like 2001 i only saw black superheroes in power rangers and so when i finally seen black superheroes in up up and away boy i was ecstatic that was my favorite disney movie i rented that movie like all the fucking time bro and then disney channel like flipped the script and then you never saw disney channel movies like that again bro and don't even get me started like uh, all the other disney movies that like had black kids like yeah they made the fucking uh what was that damn the color of friendship and all you know they they the typical but disney i get disney credit when credit is due they was actually doing some different shit when it came to black kids especially nickelodeon in the 90s and i can't even bring them motherfuckers up because of the damn scandal and shit anyway but the fact is like i was like superhero and sci-fi and shit that's why i love star wars like samuel L. jackson bro when i seen samuel L. jackson as a, as a fucking jedi i lost my shit bro i was like he he me he is me with a light and his like he had the only purple lights he had the only different color lightsaber you evil as fuck you get a red one and then everybody else had blue or green and then samuel L. jackson gangsta ass come in there with a fucking purple one bro bro eight-year-old me lost my shit bro like think like bro like that shit is so important for kids so yes as a black nerd when i'm watching bleach and i see yorichi as a black female kicking ass that shit is dope to me yes when i'm watching naruto and i see killer b mop up sasuke a main character while rapping and dogging his ass i'm gonna be lit like even though we didn't get a lot of representation of anime and shit especially in the early 90s and stuff and and, and early 2000s late 90s early 90s 2000s and shit they did when we did get that time that shine it was except for dragon ball that's the only one that kind of yeah they kind of r.i.p character but he did us wrong bro <laughs> he did make mr popo a, a raw ass nigga though even though mr popo ain't black he's um supposed to be that genie from lore i forget but i'm going on a tangent and i'm sorry i'm gonna start the video but i say all that to say that black nerds we went through a lot and when black people as a whole start undoing our trauma everybody needs to take accountability so for you to get on to a black nerd saying that nobody liked them because they naruto ran and stuff in the halls and powered up like a super saiyan we were kids they were kids you know what i'm saying i didn't do it because i got picked on hella early with that shit so i was oh, really aware for that shit so i got picked so like nobody really picked on me for anime people picked on me for power ranger shit but even still we were fucking kids bro i'm a kid walking around with this now you ain't gonna say shit to me boy 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 anyway i dare nigga wouldn't but what's crazy though in today's time i do the same shit i've been doing since a fucking youngin now the shit cool niggas a seat bro what was i at i was some bro i was somewhere dumb i just wore my fucking i wore this more for for, the, for some i bro i for, i can't even, i can't even think right now but i was doing something i think that was a bullshit saturday i just put it on because i just uh rebought this one because uh all, all another thing i lost all my shit from childhood but anyway i've been rebuying shit that's another thing if you ever get a therapist and they tell you to heal your child self or whatever to get through your trauma stuff lots of the times like for me i still like all this shit because it, it it reminds me of my mom my mom died when i was young she put me on the power rangers and anime and shit and so that's really you know a lot of it for me so like um and that's just and it could be something simple as that to like get you through life to just the little things that make you happy so like i was wearing this morpher out and i went and did something with my brother and niggas was like bro i remember that shit bro that's so and i'm just like y'all niggas are weird bro and like i know i'm weird <laughs> and it sounds weird saying this out loud damn it does sound weird as fuck saying this out loud but like me i'm just being myself so like i don't think about it i don't think nothing i don't think about it too deep when i wear a power ranger morpher that day you know what i'm saying like i'm just being me i'm just walking around my fucking morpher why because i'm a fucking dweeb you know what i'm saying 
But when everybody started like gassing me up because I'm wearing, I'm like, bro, you, bro, you a goat, bro. You be doing all shit. Just you be just doing what the fuck you want to, man. I feel you, bro. And I'd be like, bro, why are you dick riding me? That shit, I don't know. It's like, it's, why? It just doesn't make sense to me. And that's what the world we in now. And so a lot of this shit, when you see all these nerdy anime niggas seeing all these folks like an anime. It's just like they really just want an apology, bro, from their hometown, especially when the folks. Like, and a lot of the people that love an anime, it's niggas that picked on them. Like my cousin used to dog me out, bro, and now him and his bitch watch anime, and they third they be watching the shit, bro, like thoroughly, like enjoying it. And she was into anime, and everything he talked about me for is what she is, and that shit baffles me, bro, to this day. To this day, this shit is like it does not make like my brain because I just for so and I know people could change, but sometimes that don't that that switch don't connect to some of us, and that's what a lot of this shit is. So we're gonna get into this video because I don't went on a whole fucking tangent. Sorry for boring y'all, but uh, a lot of these problems get solved like people just like you know sit back and just who let that nerdy nigga get that shit off his chest bro and a lot of these dudes like okay like with women i know i'm fuck i'm gonna go into another tangent like with women a lot of nerdy dudes date so for me i date who likes me i'm not gonna chase nobody i'm not gonna go out to nobody who ain't fuck with me and it don't even gotta be somebody that that watches anime and shit like that. Hell, a lot of times, the women that do like me don't like none of that shit. They fuck with it because they like to see me get hyped for all this shit, and they just intrigued with it. And they sit down and watch a couple of women, but let me do my thing. But it's just like I don't know. Some women like to see passion and 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 men and what they like and it's just weird like it's i mean not weird because opposites attract but it's just like i mean a lot of the women that i date don't watch anime and so with nerdy niggas they pro they just date who likes them they saw that they got play over here instead of getting play over here and it's like for our culture it's like you got to do so much to impress somebody when over here they they like you for who you are and accept your true self you know what i'm saying yeah, you can't be a bum in on in either side, but it's like the nerdy nigga wasn't a bum. He just liked anime. He probably, you know, was depressed, and a lot of folks are depressed in college. So of course, and then, you know, of course he did like probably take a shower regularly, like he should, or you know what I'm saying. But like when he got to get a girl and felt like, oh shit, somebody spoke with me. I gotta smell good. You know what I'm saying? Little things spark in a dude when they have somebody that acknowledges them. That's even when you get a friend. Like, when you get a real friend and they acknowledge you, bro, like, you don't want to, like, be funky and shit around them and shit like that. And so, I see all this this, this talks online about, like, how black females, you know, they, they talk about the black nerdy dudes, but it's like, you didn't get them no play. Y'all was going at the football players and basketball players just like the Chili's and stuff were. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, you can't blame them for getting a play other races and stuff when they accepted them and on top of that like yes yeah, some of them may hate their skin color and all that and that's a whole nother topic for another day but like at the end of the day like y'all don't make it no better for them you know what i'm saying like how you gonna how can somebody like themselves when they always get talked about for what they are you know what i'm saying like so it's a real like when you get when you start understanding the psychology of how the brain works and you know your mental status and like that mental shit is so real and start unwinding like folks trauma like getting to the root of trauma like you'll start understanding like does it make it right no and i'm not giving folks excuses but like a lot of that shit stems from like when folks was kids and stuff and society don't let men show feelings and show emotions and stuff like that so they bury that shit deep and just become hateful and stuff like that it doesn't make it right it's wrong you know what i'm saying and a lot of them need to heal but if you see your fellow nerdy black brother on a healing journey don't down them because they're calling folks out on their shit you know what i'm saying 
listen to them and ask them why. And then just because and none of these new nerdy niggas, oh, another thing for y'all, bro. Stop downplaying what happened to another nerdy nigga just because it didn't happen to you. That's nothing that pisses me off. You'd be like, well, it didn't happen to me, so it must not happen. No, nigga, just because it didn't happen to you because you probably was in the streets and like nerd. And, I mean, you was in the streets, but like nerdy shit. You was in the streets and like anime. So you had some cool points and shit like that. Just because it didn't happen to you or nobody tried you and shit like that don't mean it didn't happen to the next nigga. You know what I'm saying? Hell, I was like DJing and shit, and I was around a bunch of street niggas. They didn't fuck. They they didn't pick on me, but the niggas that did pick on me, you know what I'm saying? They cut that shit out quick. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it's just like that. So like, don't fucking downplay somebody's shit just because you didn't experience it. It it happened, bro, and you know it happened. But y'all can't sit there and just let a nigga, you know, express themselves. Anyway, uh. Let's get this video to zero. This video already gonna be long as fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, YouTube. But uh, y'all know what y'all signed up for. Anyway, let's get into it. I think a lot of black people uh, can relate to the idea of not feeling black enough. I feel like I've always kind of struggled with the idea of identity growing up and just trying to figure out where I fit in as a black person. And although I seem very like passionate and proud and racial justice warrior now, um, this is honestly very new to me to kind of embrace all of my identity um, and being okay with feeling like I don't really fit into the constructs of blackness. A lot of weird people who think that there's only one way to be black. White audiences didn't quite understand me, but black audiences especially didn't understand me. I'm a big nerd who likes sci-fi and video games. Little did I know that finding enjoyment in these things made me not black enough. And I feel like it is a lot Man. of people in my race that are perpetuating that idea. It makes you feel really, really rejected. White people already do this. They already discriminate against- Bro, that the rejected thing, that's, that was my thing, because a lot of folks would look at me because my my dad, you know, he was a, a a big tour DJ, and was around all the rappers and stuff, and you know he was known for all this like hip hop shit, and then he had the nerdiest fucking son ever, and so it was just like folks wanted me to be this fucking I don't know what the fuck they had in their head for me, but it didn't fit them, and they was just. I just know I didn't fit in. And that's the saddest thing as a kid when you just know you don't fit in. It's one thing to like grow and as you get older to realize like I don't really fit in but I'm kicking it. But to just know as a kid you don't fit in. You don't really fit in with your friends because they're your friends because your dad and his dad is cool. And so you're around them because of your parents but they don't really fuck with you. And then it sucks when you go to school, you can't really find your group of folks that fuck with you. And then if you do, they fuck with you because of one of the homies. But, like, you never was the one that got invited or got thought about to get, you know, got phone calls. And when everybody was together, you never got that call and shit. And then when you jump around your white friends, you were black. So it's just like you always heard, like, underlying racist shit. Or like, you know, you're okay, but the other ones ain't. And it's just like, it make you feel weird. So it's like, if you think like that, then I don't need to be around you. You know what I'm saying? Like, to have that feeling growing up, always feeling like you don't belong. And then when you get home, I'm not saying it under my roof, home home. But like, you get around family and they don't really fuck with you because you're different. It just sucks, bro. Like, it's a really awful feeling. That goes back to that trauma thing I was telling you about, like, when folks start venting that, bro, like let them get that, let them get that shit off, bro. And if you and you as a part of that trauma, take accountability. That's another thing. A lot of folks don't want to take accountability. Or why somebody else is like fucked up, and they did it to them. It's sad, bro. Says they already push their stereotypes onto us. So why are we doing it to each other, black people? But more specifically, American black people 
hold a very specific status in the world. Because American black people, I mean, you just look at how much they've done to influence modern day pop culture. This general swag that they've brought to everything. People just want to participate in whatever black people are talking about or are doing or are pioneering. You know, I'm cool, plus I'm black, which is cool, so I win twice. Essentially, we're at the very heart and soul of pop culture, even if we're not always giving credit for it. And oftentimes, being black is synonymous with being cool. But this internalized standard of what's expected from the black community can also unintentionally leave many feeling othered or not black enough if they don't feel that they fit into the mold and live up to the standard of being hip and cool by the means of our culture. So today I'm going to explore what it means to be a blurred, a black nerd or at the very least, deconstruct what it means to navigate the world as a black person possessing stereotypically nerdy or quirky traits. Hey man, we ain't need 10 minutes in, she's spitting, bro. We ain't need five minutes. According to Wikipedia, a nerd is a person seen as overly intellectual, obsessive, introverted, or lacking social skills. Such a person may spend a lot of time on unpopular, little known, or non-mainstream activities such as science fiction or fantasy. So a bit of etymology for how this term came to be. Nerd was typically used as a synonym for drip or square in 1951 Detroit, which essentially referred to someone who was very conventional, traditional, and out of touch with mainstream trends. Some oral traditions may have suggested that nerd is a derivative of drunk spelled backwards, which, you know, obviously refers to someone who studies rather than parties, maybe not so obvious. But that is a speculation that I found in my research. A little fun fact, the first time we saw the word nerd documented is in Dr. Seuss's 1950 book, If I Ran the Zoo. This is one of his uh, books that got pulled for, you know, racist imagery. Um, but the word nerd was used here to describe an odd looking fictional creature. But this wasn't a usage like that we associate now with our understanding of nerds. The term nerd became popular with the rise of the technology industry, but also with the media. In the 1970s sitcom Happy Days, this term was used oftentimes as an insult. And in typical nerd fashion, the wrong move. What am I gonna do with your funds early, huh? I will say there are common synonyms to nerd that are often just used interchangeably with it. Things like geek, dork, dweeb, but each of these terms do have unique meanings and are slightly different. They're used in different contexts, but what they do have in common is the fact that it's used to describe people who are typically very socially awkward, have weird, non-social, or peculiar interests, and are just overall othered socially. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be focusing on the nerd term specifically. The idea of what nerdiness is has definitely become a lot more elusive over time. What makes somebody a nerd today is a lot less concrete than it was like several decades ago. We have this person in my comments who says, I think that in the past, nerds were seen as people with certain interests, things like comics, anime, and games. As these have become more loved by more people and become more mainstream, I began to wonder, does this mean the world has become more nerdy? So because of this reason, I decided to break down nerd characteristics into two categories. Number one is the nerd caricature. This is the over-exaggerated, stereotypical definition of a nerd. These are typically the depictions we see in movies and in TV shows and just in the media in general. And then list number two is going to be taking feedback from self-identified nerds and sort of accumulating the similar characteristics they share today. But starting off with the nerd caricature. In the media, nerds are typically shown as being very techy or like computer whizzes. This is mainly due because the that term nerd uh, gained popularity when tech, the technology industry was first sort of introduced and was not as commonplace as it is today. It was seen as more elite and only for like really smart people, AKA nerds. Nerd characters are typically shown as loving school or really enjoying learning. And I want to get back to school. I simply crave academic nourishment. And these characters are typically very enthusiastic about science, math, engineering, or computer science. Nerd characters are typically enthusiastic and very intellectual about other peculiar topics, such as like sci-fi, comics, anime, manga, Dungeons and Dragons. So therefore, these people might enjoy live action role play, cosplay, or attend nerdy conventions such as Damn, I shall be doing a live action. 
<laughs> that's when I say I be walking around wearing my morphers, wishing the motherfucker would. In my head, I'm a Power Ranger, bro, and you can't tell me I'm not in my head. Whenever that, in, in during the day, if I'm wearing my morpher, hell, sometimes when I'm not, most of the time when I'm not wearing my morpher, if I got on two braces, I feel like I got my Zeonizer on, bro. Like, ah, I, I, bro, I'll be wishing a nigga would just cause, bro. In my head, I'm like dead ass, bro. Like, if you go on my Instagram and see my Power Ranger cosplay, like, I'm dead ass, bro, with the shits, bro. Comic Con. Nerd characters are typically shown as loners, being a bit socially awkward, not really getting social cues. They certainly don't have a lot of friends, not like a girlfriend or boyfriend by any means. And nerd characters are typically shown as being naive and usually get taken advantage of by the protagonist or the more popular character. Nerd characters are shown as being unattractive, wearing very high-waisted pants, thick glasses. They usually dress extremely formally with like, you know, suspenders, maybe a bow tie. And typically nerd characters are shown to have braces. Well, this is something I never really got because like, I don't know how braces got associated with nerds because braces just means I'ma have straight teeth and you won't. <laughs> but that's just me though. <laughs> and probably the overarching characteristics of nerd caricatures is that nerdiness is seen as an inherent character flaw. And nerds are typically shown that they need to be cool or fixed by cool people to be able to be accepted, to have friends, and to just overall enjoy life. And clumsiness is only part of the problem. You're all- Listen, man, Steve Urkel taught us this shit years ago. He gave us a playbook years ago. Man, when that nigga Stefan came out of the damn chamber, bruh, and her bitch ass was like, oh, and start, bruh, she gave him the guac guac 3000 that night. What you mean? And, it, and, that, and that goes back to what I was saying, bruh, like black dudes, we have to do so much to be accepted, bruh. And I'm not saying like, you know, we like, you know, don't take care of yourself, like, don't mix like and that's another like that's one thing too people try to mix the two like they try to take taking care of yourself for like doing all this extra shit like um what was dude's name uh dang uh i was just watching his shit uh he reacted to flat tops chicken shit uh the Quan wilkshire and he was like telling Flat Top that he needed to, you know, get dressed and or you know cut his fro and do all this that and the third to make himself look presentable to black girls. And it's just like, I get that, but why does a black man have to do X Y Z? Like it's one thing of taking care of yourself and making sure you know your skin moisturized you're not smelling you ain't out here smelling like ass you use deodorant versus she only gonna fuck with you if you got braids or dreads or you know waves you know what i'm saying or a low top fade like why can't he keep his fro and females accept him why does he have to get braids because rapper because braids is usually like the typical you know what i'm saying black dude fashion and that's one thing why like you know like i got dressed but i got dressed before it was even a fashion thing you know what i'm saying like i started locking up my shit because like my uncle he had dressed not and then um the red ranger for power Rangers in space had dressed so i just was fascinated from dress bro everything bro everything bro bro everything goes back <laughs> everything goes back to power rangers bro with me Everything goes back to Power Rangers, and that's what you gotta know. So, but I thought the Red SPD Ranger was so dope. He was the leader. He had dreads, and he was that nigga. You was not run his spade. He gonna beat your ass anyway. Uh, but my uncle he put me on game with the lifestyle of like what it mean to be a Rasta, and you know he was Jamaican, and so I was just learning all this shit from him and being in tune with my culture even though i like you know as a black man we don't know where we come from we but we 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 crave that as black people we crave to be connected to like our roots and and all that's why like a lot of black folks like they pick they pick something and then fall in love with it like why you think a lot of black folks like they find probably find mexican culture and then 
you know, fall in love with, like, everything about Mexico and all this stuff. Like, we don't have that. So, like, genetically, we crave to know where we come from. So we find somewhere and, and latch on to it and learn all about their culture because we really don't have none. And that's why, like, when you see, like, today when people get upset that, like, people culture appropriate us is because – we're finally in a space to where we've like we've created our own culture with hip hop. Like hip hop is our culture, you know what I'm saying? So like, hip hop is the culture. Rap is just like the music and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And so like hip hop though, as a whole, is Black American culture, and that's why folks get so upset because we don't have anything. We're not connected to Africa. They call us African Americans, but even Africans don't even fuck with us, bro. They think we bougie crybabies that got it made over here and we don't know what we got, which a lot of people don't know what they got. Yes, yeah, some people are living better than others, but, you know, they don't think like that. They think like they're in the hood and they're not living where they want to be and they want to get their family out. But then again, they could be in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I see the dichotomy of the two sides, but, like, at the same time, it's never going to go nowhere. But with black Americans, we don't have culture. We don't we're not connected to the motherland like we should be. And they haven't reached out. Some some countries are starting to reach out now for us, but it's all a scam. Like I hear some 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 horror stories about black Americans moving over there and they just get handled and bamboozled twenty four seven over there all the time. Like like they go over there and like man, like just take advantage of us and it's fucked up. Like like, one girl, she said, like, you know, that like, she knew, like, um the culture there. Like, she lived there. Like, she knows the language. But she looks like an outsider. So she goes there, and then, like, the dude was just raising the prices on her, thinking that she couldn't speak the language. And then when she called him out on his shit in their language, he was like, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it was just, like, this whole fucking, like, thing because it was this whole thing because... He was trying to go over on us. And so picture like what the, he does to like other black folks that don't know no better. You know what I'm saying? And it's just fucked up the how they treat us. So back to America, though, we don't have that over there. We don't know what tribe we're from. We're the lost tribe. Even in the Bible, they speak about us. We're the lost tribe. We're the lost Israelites. And we're going to be cursed for 400 years. All that shit's in the Bible. We're the lost ones. And so the lot like... To be lost, you wanna you wanna have somewhere that feels like home, that that feels familiar. So like, when folks get defensive because of that, and 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 it sucks that everybody can take from us, and get cool and popular with it now, and we get called ghetto and rash and stuff when we do it. Like dreads, like I remember one of the jobs I applied for. I ended up being the store manager for that job, but like for years. When I was in school, I applied for it, and then it took, like, them hiring um, one of my friends' his sister. She was a mixed girl, and she only got that job because they had to diversify. They, it was only white folks there, and I think somebody complained. And she hired me because, like, you know, one of the dudes quit on her. But, like, I didn't even believe her that she was hiring me, and Gangstar was like that, too. It was FYE and Gangstar. They both was racist as fuck. Never let black dudes in there. This, that, and third. It, it, and, and stores are still like that because I had dreads. And they would not hire me because I had dreads. And it's like a white dude can have dreads. And it'd be the sloppiest, shittiest, mayonnaise-looking dreads you can think of. And he in there thinking he that nigga smell like fucking swamp water. And it's that, and that's and that's why you get folks that's so defensive about black culture. But with black culture also, why can't the nerdy stuff be a part of us too because it's so many smart geeky nerdy black folks but we get ostracized because we don't fit the hip-hop stuff we're not doing a hip-hop shit i didn't get dressed for the hip-hop i got dressed because of a fucking power engine and my uncle just telling me about all this cool shit but when I got dressed, I got shitted on because they was in like the baby stages and folks talked about me 24 7 and then when I went off to college and came back and they had some length on them, now now I'm that nigga. But it's like, why? 
And it's just like all the folks that was like, oh, I like your jersey shit. I don't even want you to be around me no more because the energy that you gave me when I started the shit, it's not the energy that is matching now. And that goes back to the damn keeping folks accountable and stuff. And that's what a lot of folks don't like. But it sucks that like black dudes, it's, it, it, Steve Urkel told us, bro. Steve Urkel told us that these hoes ain't going to like you till you fit the norm or fit what they want. Like, you got to look a certain part. And that shit's sad, bro. Also, annoying and socially inept, Steve. It would be nice if you tried to change. If you tried to change. Steve? No, 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 no. <laughs> there is no Steve here. I'm Stefan, sweet thing. So in essence, there is a strong correlation between being smart and being a nerd and an even stronger inverse correlation between being a nerd and being popular. So what is a nerd today? As I said earlier, this term has become a lot more elusive as more nerdy things have become mainstream. As we can see from this commenter, Jasmine, she says that I've never considered myself to be a nerd. I do, however, enjoy coding, reading, video games, and other nerdy activities. I was also a biomedical science major. I think I'm cool AF. Period. <laughs> so yes, this is an example of people who possess nerdy qualities, but don't necessarily associate with that nerd terminology. So I went to my comments. I asked. I I mean, I wear that shit proud. I don't give a fuck. I know I'm a fucking nerd and geek. But in today's time, bro, what can't nobody, bro? When I'm out and about, if you don't know, bro, if you don't know the characters on my shirt, like when I wear, like I wear primitive. And if you if you in the clothing and, and um uh, damn I hate using this word if you in the hype beast culture and I hate hype beast because it seems so fucking lame. Hype beast was cool back in like 2012 and shit. But anyway, if you in the hype beast culture and you know what primitive is, you know primitive they they have all they they designs and shit on the back. Very rarely, very rarely you see uh a primitive shirt and they got the shit in the front so like when i'm out and about bro if i got a chain on and my primitive hoodie bro i just like a regular nigga bro out here chilling you know what i'm saying or i don't let me be feeling myself when i got my dreads in a bun or something man i got my bandana tied up bro like bi like bitches no you know what i'm saying and it's just like it's so crazy that now I wear and do the same shit and it's cool now. Only difference is I got I got jewelry now. And the only reason I got fucking jewelry now is because when I travel and network and tell you know, I DJ I do that and third, folks don't take you seriously because you don't look the part. And that goes back to why I gotta do all this shit to prove to you that I'm doing what I say I'm doing. And my talent can't speak for me. I can't show you a video of me DJing. Cause you ain't gonna take me seriously because I ain't got the I don't look like a lick. Now when I travel and stuff, I gotta look like this. I gotta look like a DJ and shit. I gotta look like a rapper and shit for you to take me seriously as a DJ. I gotta look like I'm already X Y Z for you to take. And that's what's sad about rap, up and coming rappers. Like talent don't matter no more, bro. If you got a little bag and you you find somebody, get your jewelry, make you some jewelry, or get your shit popping, and make it look and make it bust down, bust that bitch down. A hundred k follows that quick, ten k follows that quick, and then you say you rapping, and then you get on Instagram doing all that. Then what them rappers be doing? Man, you know something like, bro, I look like a leak. All that damn ratchet shit, bro. You in there? And it's sad you gotta do that, bro. It's bro, man, that should be pissing me the fuck off, bro. But yeah, if you knew if 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 deep bro, if y'all knew how much money these nerds be spending on all this fucking shit, like if you knew how much Power Ranger Morphers cost on the Reeves tail on the uh, aftermarket and shit like that, like on eBay and shit, if you knew how much all these collectible anime statues and certain pops that came out back in 2010 when pops wasn't cool and now they don't make that no more and they ain't re-released none of this shit 
if you knew how much certain Power Ranger Megazords and shit cost online, you knew, bruh. But I gotta wear jewelry and shit for you to take me seriously. Bro, get the fuck, bro. That shit, bro. Get the fuck out of here, bro. That shit be pissing me off. Ask you guys if you consider yourself a nerd, and if so, what factors make you identify as such? I've accumulated all of like the similar factors that y'all self-identified nerds had, and I came up with this list. So according to my comments, self-identified nerds are typically kind of socially awkward or maybe kind of shy or introverted. Self-identified nerds express their interests in more alternative genres of media or entertainment that are typically perceived to have very niche communities. So things like anime, manga, indie music, comics, things like that. Self-identified nerds in my comments also mention that they are interested in sci-fi or fantasy, things like Star Trek, Star Wars, and the MCU, for example. Nerds today may cosplay or intend like the nerdy conventions I mentioned before, such as Comic-Con or PAX, E3, those types of conventions. People who consider themselves nerds in my comments- Bro, I remember when the first time I went to E3, I lost my shit, bro. That was, a, that was the last dub E3. I'm so glad I got to go to that E3. It was the first time, it was the first time in like, what, six, seven years they opened it up to the public? Or ten years or some shit? It was 2017, yeah, it was the first time in ten years they had opened up to the public. And because they did that, all the fucking, um, game designers hated it. Because they couldn't try nothing out. Only went out there to play Destiny 2, though. Destiny 2 was so fucking lit, though. <sighs> I'm nerding now, let me chill out. But, uh. I may on here, um, and that's one thing about streaming on here. Y'all may think I'm fucking uh, extroverted as fuck, boy. No, boy, fuck no. I'm the most introverted shy nigga you could think of. But this is where uh, I don't want to say schizophrenia, but multiple personality, multiple personality. Syndrome kicks in my fucking country accents be slurring my words and shit. Uh, I I learned quick that I had to like make a I had to switch, especially like being a DJ. Like I can't be shy as fuck DJing, bro. Oh my god, I I went so long DJing without talking on the mic and shit. But anyway, um, I still I'm very introverted, but I know to make it out here in this life you cannot be like that. And my dad just taught me like i don't know like he taught me how to like compartmentalize that shit you know what i'm saying and it but it helped me with my nerves and stuff so i was able to do so much shit and achieve so much because like i was able to make this switch and i don't know if it's healthy or not my therapist and my doctors are still helping me out with that shit but in the long run, like I can, I can flip that switch. But, but when I'm out here acting like, this, like right now, bro, when I'm streaming and shit, especially when I got like a lot of y'all in here, like I, like I feel more okay with like one or two people watching me, and then release the video on YouTube. And when I get like, when I be seeing those videos get like over a thousand views, that shit be baffling me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like I just be going on tangents, bro. And I just be chilling. And I feel like I'm just talking to, like, you know, one person versus an entire world. And so, like, I can, like, I can be extroverted with people I fuck with or people that's fucking with me. But, like, just to be out there doing that shit, man, hell no, nah, bro. Hell no. Nah. Like, when I go out with my brothers and them, I, I'm i the main one quiet. But if I'm out by myself or something and... and Somebody that say, bro, that's a dope hoodie, bro, I, I talk, talk your head off. It's so weird, bro. I don't know what it is, bro. But uh, they call it something, but I, I, I claim both of them. But internally, like, I, I don't, I don't even want to do it. But I know you have to be extroverted to make it in life.
Thomas also said that they were pretty book smart or they were good in school or enjoyed learning. And there was a common thread of people saying that they enjoy subjects such as STEM, history, and literature. But more than anything, the overarching theme that I found is that nerds have a plethora of knowledge and a lot of enthusiasm about any one particular topic. Somebody in my comments says that for me, being a nerd is not defined by what you love, but by how you love. Nerds are people who really dive into the things they love. They want to know all the ins and outs, the lore, the everything. Another commenter, Briar X Rose, says that being a history nerd, a tech nerd, or a math slash science nerd is different from being a movie nerd, a gaming nerd, an anime nerd, and so on. And then finally, another commenter says that I often dig deeper into stuff than what is seen as normal. I love books and gaming, and I also consider myself a makeup nerd. So you can see here that nerds today are typically just anyone who has a lot of interest in any particular topic, no matter what it is. In fact, many self-identified nerds see this term as a sense of pride. We have this commenter who says, I'm one of those people who grew up in a time where being a nerd was a bad thing. Now that I'm an adult who can really set my own rules and more importantly buy my own stuff, I embrace the term and heavily identify with it. So now that's that's what the fuck I'm talking about. That's what the fuck I am, bro. That's what the bro. Yes, I got grown up money now. I do what the fuck I want. I buy pirate suit because that's the that's what the fuck I can do. I ain't got no kids, and if I did, I'll buy that little nigga a Power Ranger suit too and get what we doing. We out here thugging it, my boy. That's what I'm saying, bro. Wear that shit proud, bro. Don't be ashamed of that shit. I, I, in my head, I'm the Red Ranger, and bitch, I wish you would. Like, bro, that's what I'm saying. Yes, I feel that. Yes. Not only have a lot of traditionally nerdy things become mainstream, like take gaming or like anime, for example, but activities- And that's enough, bro. That's another thing. Y'all, y'all, bro, bro, let me make the big screen, bro. Y'all new, y'all new niggas in this anime gaming shit. Y'all ruining the fucking culture, bro. Granted, I'm happy y'all enjoying yourself, but y'all have made free to play games like people, like the way to go. So every game want to be free to play so they can just milk you with money. No, nigga. No. And now games want to be a service. Yes, Destiny is amazing. I'm a prime example. Boy, I spend money on Destiny so quick. But. I know when I buy this expansion, or used to when I buy this expansion, I'm finna get a plethora of shit. So of course I'm gonna spend. Oh, well, it used to be twelve dollars on a, on a fucking skin. Now that shit went up to twenty dollars, bro. Cause they trying to milk the fuck out of us. But they got that idea cause Fortnite fucking raised its price and Fortnite's blowing up and it's just like, bro, free to play games back in the day used to be laughed at. A free to play game, get get the fuck out of here with that shit. Now niggas don't even spend money on games, bro. Like, folks be looking at me weird when I be like, bro, I don't play free-to-play games. And they be like, what? Why? What the fuck? And it, and it, to me, that's basic as, basic as hell, bro. You ain't got no money. You can't buy no, you can't buy no fucking, y'all, y'all spend $10 on that damn season pass quick. But won't drop $60, $70 on a game that looks fire. You gotta wait till some fucking YouTuber tell you to get it. And half the time, they be dogging this shit because it's their opinion. No, nobody got their own opinions and shit no more. And then don't get me started with the anime shit. Y'all don't ruin the anime shit so much because now manga companies, if it ain't an instant hit like fucking um, what was that damn? What was the manga? What was the manga? What was the manga? Uh, damn, 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 damn. Sword dude, sword, sword guy, sword guy. Fuck, I was just wearing a fucking shit. Um, Demon Slayer. If it ain't no hit like Demon Slayer, it gets canceled. And that's sad as fuck that, like, now comic book writers, and, and, I mean, manga artists and stuff and writers don't got that, that, that leeway of two to three years to build their audience and build the story up and lay the foundation before they get fucking canceled. If the shit not popping in uh, three to six months, that shit gets canceled. And that shit is so fucking sad, bro. That shit is sad. Bro, if it's stuff like Yu Yu Hakusho, Dragon Ball, fucking Naruto, Bleach, Wump, all the shit y'all crave and love today. If all that shit came out today, it would have never gotten past. We would have, and One Piece would have never got to fucking, um, what's that damn island? Uh, it would have never got out of East Blue. It would have never got to East Blue. Naruto would have never seen the tuning exams. 
if it got canceled and to, if it would have came out today's time. Bleach would have, bro, uh, uh, Ryuka would have never, would have never, y'all would have never known what Ryuka, like she would have, y'all would have never seen Soul World, none of that shit, if Bleach came out today. Dead ass, bro. I'm being so fucking for real. And so much shit that has promise and story gets canceled, bro, because it's not a fucking one hit it bro demon slayer was a demon in a bottle and what's crazy demon slayer is just a bunch of shit from inuasha yu yu hakusho naruto and fucking uh what's that damn uh damn inuasha dog it's another it was another fucking um uh, damn i can't think of the damn uh i want to say doro doro maybe Dora. it's like those four shows combined like with the premise and stuff and then but it doesn't go no de like demon slayer is so surface level and some animes can be surface level don't take away from it but like demon slayer blew up in a time where we was in the pandemic we was sitting at home niggas and ha niggas didn't watch everything on netflix they had to watch anime and demon slayer got popular because that shit that first episode hooked you so motherfucking quick and she didn't and then when she wrote that story she didn't want to write she didn't want to go past 200 chapters she wanted to tell a quick instant story and she didn't think it was going to get that successful but because bro demon slayer was out for years before it got the popularity it did in the pandemic and it only got that big because of the pandemic and it's just like now companies judge everything off of Demon Slayer and it's not fair to them, bro. When that was a time and a place, it was just a moment in time, bro. And it's so sad. And now, like, um, certain companies are going under because if the anime don't look pretty like Demon Slayer or look fucking flashy like JJK, they they don't get the time and day. They don't get they don't get in the, 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 the backing and stuff like all this other stuff. And now anime starting to look shitty because everything everybody the same two companies are working on all the big anime, bro. And we can't fuck they can't keep up with shit. They can't keep up with the demand and stuff. And and I feel so sorry for the animators and stuff in Japan. Them niggas getting overworked and paid even less, bro, because all of them are contracted. They don't work for the company. They just get called in like, hey, we got a new season. We're calling you in because we seen your little post on Indeed or Twitter, and I like what you do. And that's how a lot of them get hired, bro. And they live not even paycheck to paycheck, bro. And it's so sad. And these companies, if it ain't flashy and, and super spectacular and stuff, and then don't get me started on my hero. Y'all don't ruin my hero because y'all not paying attention to fucking like the story. Y'all like critiquing off the fight. So now that the sales dip, and like they've been. They was pushing out movies and shit, and everything just dropped. Like, they ruining the quality. And it's just like, I wish shit would get back to how it was in, like, the the late 2000s, early 2010s, where you can get good quality anime and, like, a fire-ass story. And, like, and not every anime need to be long. Like, I commend her for wanting to make Demon Slayer, like, you know, 200 chapters, under 200 chapters. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But, like, because the time and place that came out is, is like, it fucked up the industry and now everybody judging anime on how it looks instead of just watching it and getting the story bro that shit is sad bro but y'all new niggas and then y'all love arguing us old niggas on what shit is bro y'all bro bro don't that's a that's a whole nother different topic but i'm not even gonna get into that but still it just they not thankful bro they want everything to be like the last thing and that's not that's not good for the culture bro is an interest that would make you an outcast like years ago now have online communities and some media depictions now even show their nerdy characters doing more normal people things or like what's stereotypically popular kid activities things like having a girlfriend or a boyfriend who's not solely there to take advantage of them or dressing nice or normally i should say <laughs> So the small box of what nerds were just several years ago now have, you know, expanded. But some nerds still disassociate themselves with this term. We have Star Mayor in my comments who says, I always grew up with the exposure to the negative connotation of the geek slash nerd. So by nature, I struggled to identify that way. 
I will not outright dispute it when someone calls me one, but I will always be adverse to that phrase. And then we have another commenter who says, as a black woman, I've never really identified as a nerd, even though I've got a lot of nerdy interests like anime, manga, gaming, comics, and reading lots of books. I guess I never identified with the word because it's mainly white men who are portrayed. And this leads me to the next topic I wanna to explore, which is where possessing nerdy qualities or traits collides with being black. Oh, so what, does, what does it mean to be black? black? Well, that answer will vary from person to person because there is no one single black experience. But I think a good place to start understanding this identity collision is by taking a look at black culture. This portion of the video specifically is going to hone in on black American culture, but just given the fact that we all originate from the same motherland, I'm sure that you can find a lot of similarities across the greater African diaspora. But with that being said, it's important to recognize blackness as not just a race, but as a culture and a community. Yes, there is that sort of universal experience we can all relate to just due to the ongoing effects of racism and colonialism in countries across the globe. But throughout slavery, the Civil War and Reconstruction in America, black Americans created their own culture to reinstill that pride and sense of belonging and community that was prohibited for us to express via the transatlantic slave trade. One of the biggest things I feel happened in America, you know, because of the slave trade is it wasn't just people that were stolen from Africa. It wasn't just lives that were stolen from Africa. The more I read about it, the more I understand that fundamentally they stole one of the most valuable things you can steal from a person, and that is the knowledge of your culture. Mm. The knowledge of who you are a part of just because you are. Told one thing you. I've always admired about black Americans, and this is- Told you, it all goes back to like, we're missing that core of who we are, bro. This is something that I feel has traversed the globe is black Americans created a culture unto themselves, That's right. which is beautiful, you know, hip hop and, and, and style of language and, 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 and dressing and everything. And, and that became a culture. So black American culture was born out of our resilience, our resistance and our innovation. However, it's important to note that as her so eloquently put it in YouTube Originals Black Renaissance documentary, black culture is more than the Americas, the Caribbean and Europe. And it doesn't begin where freedom ends. Black culture begins where life does in Africa. And so this video cannot encompass everything that is a part of black culture. But the things I'm gonna be sharing in this section are just based off of my own personal experiences and my own personal interactions with black people. Common cultural threads I've noticed just from following a variety of different black people and black thought leaders and black creators and also from the black media I consumed. So I tried to do my best to encapsulate a lot of contributions that black Americans have made specifically and a lot of things that black Americans have popularized and a lot of things that are common in black households and black families. So using all of these sources, perspectives and voices, I came up with this list. But before we get into all that black culture entails, let's first start off by defining culture. So culture is an umbrella term which encompasses the social behavior and norms found in human societies. I went ahead and accumulated a bullet point list of all of the different elements that make up culture based off all the different definitions I read. And so here is the list that I came up with. So culture is the generational passing of habits, custom, values, language, and knowledge. It's your traditions and sort of way of doing things. Culture is the arts of a particular group or society, their literature, entertainment, music, fashion, and beauty standards. Culture consists of the laws, politics, individual pursuits, and community goals of a particular community. And finally, culture encompasses the achievements of a particular society. So culture is cultivated, culture is nourished, and most importantly, culture is generational. 
I will say though, because black Americans have had a unique experience due to the transatlantic slave trade, you know, we were not slaves, but we were enslaved. A lot of black American culture, what is considered that today, has a lot of roots to just Southern culture where a lot of the enslaved were held. And a lot of what has been passed down generationally is due to how our ancestors and how our families have had to deal with racism and oppression. Because we are still not very far Far removed from civil rights and all of these other things. Like the oppression is still happening and even in the 60s where we consider the civil rights era really still was not that long ago. There are a lot of things that oftentimes get associated with black culture but aren't inherently so. So keep that in mind as I discuss the generational passing of knowledge and values and beliefs in this next section. So for starters, I think a lot of black Americans have adopted a sort of stricter parenting style, at least like, you know, it's, and it's definitely changing now, but at least like my parents' generation and like older, <laughs> I think a lot of black Americans can relate to specific sayings or attitudes that our parents or grandparents pass down to us. Like you wanna go to McDonald's, you got McDonald's money. <laughs> a lot of black kids know what it's like to get whooped, not just spanked, but whooped. <laughs> when you live under my house, you abide by my rules. I'm the parent, you the child. What happens in the house stays in the house. And like I said earlier, a lot of that has to do with like the need more so for black parents to prepare their child for the real world and what their grandparents and what their parents taught them. For a long time, our people's mentality has been more to survive. And so this mentality has passed down a lot of really good things. But then um, on the flip side, there has also been a lot of not so good things or not so positive things that have come as a result, which again, a lot of that is changing in this generation and the next kids that are coming up but there is a lot of things that black Americans have inherited. I think something that has also been passed down to a lot of black American kids is the emphasis on education. For a majority of the time of this country, we were not given uh, the same educational opportunities or not afforded that. And so a lot of black families really prioritize how important it was to be educated, to learn how to read and to continue school. You'll notice that in a lot of black uh, families being college educated is something that is prioritized. But uh, education, unfortunately, is still more of a privilege than a right. And so because of that, a lot of times street smarts or being street savvy is what was valued in a lot of predominantly black communities. A lot of things like book smarts or like STEM, that didn't seem very tangible for a lot of black kids or just wasn't seen as desirable, quite frankly. Consequently, ways that we did see ourselves represented are in things like athletics, and entertainment, comedy, acting, entertainers, which those are all good things. However, I think sometimes that can be coupled with that is the way to make it as a black person in the world, is to just pursue these very niche activities. And to quote Dr. Naeem Akbar from his book, Chains and Images of Psychological Slavery, Entertainers and athletes are popular heroes of the African-American community. Physical prowess or comic exploit are the only characteristics black heroes are permitted to express. Intellectual acuity, prophetic vision, moral integrity, technological know-how, and managerial efficiency are characteristics seldom if ever portrayed. Harmful beliefs can also be passed generationally too. Things like there is a stigma of mental health in the black community, which I've said this time and time again, this is definitely changing, but- What I tell y'all, mental health, man, it starts there. Hey man, we gotta be accountable for that shit, bro. We gotta be, we gotta take care of each other for real. But that has been a stigma in our community for a long time that prevents a lot of black people from receiving that necessary professional help of healing that generational trauma that we have inherited. Or even the idea of when getting money and getting rich is sometimes considered white man's money <laughs> in some black communities, which again, perpetuates the idea that blackness is synonymous with poverty, which is not true. A lot of black people in America are disproportionately affected by poverty due to ongoing effects of racism, redlining, colonialism, gentrification, all of those things. However, bro, black folks, listen, man, when y'all learn about redlining and how they set up zones in the districts back when they was uh, the, the second economic boom during uh, right after World War II, 
Bro, that shit, boy, that shit fucked me up, bro. God, that shit is fucked up. And then, what's crazy, black folks used to live outside the cities while white folks lived inside the cities. So during the civil rights, this is just a, a piece from, during the civil rights when black folks was, uh, you know, trying to move into, you know, the neighborhoods and move in downtown and work jobs with white folks and all this stuff, the white folks was like, all right, fine. Y'all want y'all want all this shit. Y'all want to work here, do this and third. I right, bet they let all of us come in there and do all that stuff. And then them niggas left and made all the suburbias. So they made all the suburbias and shit like that, and then started zoning and district everything. Made the food deserts and stuff. And then so downtown would be run through. That's why like deep like places like Detroit and stuff all was ran through and shit. Because they moved out and let all the niggas move in and then put them downtown and shit. And then started sanctioning certain shit like, oh, well, if y'all live here, then a business can't be here. It's just all types of different shit. It's fucked up. And that's why L.A., all the houses outside the city and shit. And then they started zoning everything. And then when you had the zones where the white folks lived there, you get all the nice restaurants and and grocery stores and stuff like that. But then they made all the laws to where all the niggas lived that they couldn't have grocery stores and different businesses and stuff. It's fucked up, bro. Oh, it fucked me up. I was like, damn, them niggas, they did anything and everything in their power to put niggas back. And so many folks don't know about that type of shit. And they just think the world is no. Like, they purposely did shit throughout time still to this day like if y'all really think they not still doing shit under the radar because we don't got folks watching them and shit and those positions of powers and then what's crazy you get them coon ass niggas that get in position of power and then want to please them and don't look at and and then forget about where they came from and this down there because they get them them a little extra money and they a little extra hush one boy it's fucked up boy it's fucked up, boy. Man, it's fucked up. Oh, man. And then, if you want to take it even deeper, if you start looking more into, like, all the places where black folks was building up and creating their own, they was like, all right, fuck it. They kicked us out. You know what I'm saying? They did that in the third. Well, we're going to claim this little plot of land for us, and we're going to build it up and grow it and do this then the third. And black folks was really focused on that. This is right before the civil like right before the civil rights and shit and this is like this is one of the things that kicked off the civil rights too all the places where black folks like claimed as their own and did their own thing and and flourished and made it whatever they came and bombed it burned it down turned them into lakes look at smith lake in alabama um what's that lake in fucking georgia i forget what it is it's outside of atlanta um What's that Kansas City, like Black Wall Street, look up that stuff. Look up uh fucking um Africa Town and Mobile. Like all these places that black folks own. Uh, and then like look at all the farmers land and shit in Mississippi. All these black people had a bunch of farms and stuff. All the white folks came and took it from them, bro. Literally took it from them. Kicked them off their property and stuff demolished all they homes bro or burnt the city down and put like a forest there like they they you niggas couldn't live for shit bro and then they gonna and then for them to say that like that shit was long time ago it it didn't happen but it, it affected our grandparents it's it's still old people alive today that got affected from all that shit still today and they think it happened so long ago because the fucking is the pictures being black and white and it's sad, bro. It's so sad, bro. God, it's so sad. Blackness and poverty is not one in the same. So those are some examples of some like maybe not so great things that have come as a result of like black culture and our experience in America. It's complicated. But like I said earlier, there is a ton of amazing things and great things that have come as a result of black culture um, and that have been passed down to the, through the generations. Things like soul food, the way black people make food, 
it be hitting different. And the many traditions born out of our soul food dinners, like the idea of being invited to the cookout or my personal favorite hashtag that trends every year on Twitter, Thanksgiving with black families. Things like African-American vernacular English, uh, which also is referred to as Ebonics, the way we mold language and a lot of what is basically words created by black culture is just pop culture or internet language now. Another thing, a part of like the values or beliefs adopted by a lot of black Americans is even things like faith. Uh, Christianity and also Islam was adopted by a lot of black Americans. And so that has sort of those uh, religions values have been in ingrained into a lot of black American cultures and a lot of black American families. Not everyone, but I would say a large portion. Another significant way black culture has contributed to the world is through our arts. Poets, playwrights, essayists, and novelists such as yeah. James Baldwin, August Wilson, Lorraine Hansberry, Maya Angelou, and Toni Morrison all spoke to the struggle that black Americans face while still delivering a greater message to the world at large. And a countless number of black writers and authors continue that legacy today. Similarly, comedians have been able to do the same. From Dick Gregory to Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, or Dave Chappelle, black wit transcends just the black community. And you can say the same for black performing actors. In a time where American TV shows and movies showed a contemporary American life, quote unquote, R black bro, experiences. RP my nigga, bro. God, man. Damn, Chadwick, bro. I was a fan of Chadwick, bro, when he starred in uh, Jackie Robinson movie, bro. Because I played baseball growing up and shit. And bro jackie robinson to hear about jackie robinson for years and shit especially like my mom was so black pro black bro my mom was blackity black bro she was she gonna make sure i got my books and studies and all man listen man i learned about jackie robinson so early and to see that movie come to life bro i was just in awe bro in awe and the fact that chadwick played that role to a t bro like to me, when I see Jackie Robinson, I just think of Chadwick. Like, I can't even, like, I can't even separate the two. But not only for him to do that, he did James Brown, countless of other shit. But when my nigga got hired on for Black Panther, nigga, I lost my shit, bro. Damn, he we lost him too early. He was finna be the GOAT of the MCU, bro and black stories were oftentimes excluded from that conversation. So black people made our own shows and made our own space in Hollywood in the performing arts. We brought y'all The Fresh Prince, Sister Sister, Moesha, Family Matters, Girlfriends, Martin, The Cosby Show, and so many more. In a time where shows like Friends, Full House, were supposed to depict the average American life. Music has been another conduit for black excellence and black thought. From the soul of gospel and jazz to the liveliness of blues and Man, rock and roll. Blood. Yes, black people actually created rock and roll. The social consciousness of hip hop and That's the That's why I felt like it was so weird, bro, when I would listen to rock music because I, I was a drummer through high school and college. And I thought it was so weird when folks would be like, bro, you listen to that white folk shit. Nigga, we made it, nigga. I'm in my heritage right now. I'm living. I'm living my best life. And bro, we used to get bro. It's so weird how black folks, how they took, they would take our shit from us and make it their own, and then make us feel bad for liking it. Then that's what's happening in the rap right now. Like white folks, and like I love white people, but they. They latch on to white rappers so quick. And that's why white rappers blow up and they can have like the most basic bars and stuff. And I'm saying this because like, let me, let me, let me. Mac Miller is one of my favorite, rap, rap, favorite rappers, bro. Like Mac Miller, he is goaded to me. And I hate that we lost him so early. But when people like fucking, what's that nigga name? Uh, Jack Harlow exists now and like he got put on just because he's white like his music is so basic 
it's good. Like it slaps in the club and shit. Like, don't get me wrong, his shit straight. But like, because white folks want to be in that space so much, white rappers can be really mediocre and get everything when a black dude gotta do he gotta be either super lyrical and all that shit and even still it take him years to blow up look at kendrick how long kendrick was rapping before he got a buzz and then when he blew up for good kid mad city bruh niggas gotta go through trial and tribulations to get anywhere like look like let's take jack harlan this is why i commend jack harlan too because he knew what happened to him and it happened to him so quick he went back home and grabbed a black dude that he knew that was rapping for years appreciate the follow uh what's that d willie appreciate that man he went back home and grabbed uh what's that nigga name uh damn that nigga from jack carlos hometown i i don't know but y'all know who i'm talking about he went and got him brought him on tour and put him in position to blow up and then cuz got signed and shit and i think and a lot of a lot of them don't do that they are never do that and that's why like uh a lot of them look at them so so sideways like when you got people like eminem he did the same thing he blew up from detroit and then he go back and he made d12 and shit granted d12 didn't do everything but i think cuz old boy died and that kind of fucked up d12 and shit but eminem blew up when he got through that eminem blew up 50 cent you see what i'm saying like the ones that give back give back that's why like people didn't like like look at macklemore people like macklemore and shit they fell out quick bro because like they forget they they didn't deserve it then they get how you get best rap album for an album that don't even sound like rap this shit baffles me bro how they be doing us and they'll take and they'll take our shit and make it their own and make us feel bad for doing this shit and then they can rap about whatever a positive message is that in third and that shit get pushed but like if it ain't that street shit op shit the one to kill your nigga shit it ain't getting pushed that ratchet shit and that's a, that's another thing that sucks too like you gotta be mm, mm, let me be quiet if i get demonetized <laughs> duality of R&B. At the heart of all these genres are the influences and voices of Black people. And hip-hop notably being one of the most influential genres of music today, it's important to know that it's a lot more than just a trap beat or words that rhyme, and hip-hop culture transcends what you hear on the Billboard Top 100 today. Originally a unique blend of jazz and poetry, hip-hop voiced the struggles of Black Americans and brought about an entire culture of breakdancing, rap battles, street art, MCing, DJing, fashion, and so much more. From DJ Cool Herc to Curtis Blow, The Sugar Hill Gang, and Grandmaster Flash to LL Cool J, Biggie, Tupac, Lo You new rappers, y'all need DJs. Without us, y'all ain't shit, nigga. And you new DJs, bruh, y'all fucking up the game, bruh. DJs is just as much of the artist as DJs. I know this ain't got nothing to do with nerdy shit, but y'all niggas piss me off. Cause y'all want to charge $50 because y'all got a laptop and think y'all a DJ when you ain't got none of this shit that take, bruh. Oh my gosh, bruh. That's why I left that club shit alone because they, they, they fucking, I'd be like, bro, I charge $800 to do your show and they want to get mad. Bro, I'm a real DJ. I really do this. That's why I made my lane when I open up this club, man. Wait, when y'all, when y'all see y'all boy open up the club, y'all going to see. Anyway y'all new djs y'all need to get on game bro quit fucking up y'all money y'all y'all charging y'all charging fifty dollars to dj at night what you gonna do with 50 bro you can't even buy a video game with the fifty dollars what you gonna buy after you buy your ounce of weed and your roll what you and your mcdonald's that's it you you ain't got no more money nigga you dj for eight a pack of rolls or papers whatever you roll up with and a fucking big mac Y'all niggas kill me, bro. Lauren Hill and the Kendrick Lamars. Hip-hop artists of all different decades have been influential in so many ways. 
When it comes to fashion and beauty, black innovation truly shines. Rooted in African traditions, black hair has been manipulated in so many intricate ways. From braids and locks to twists and knots, shaves, waves, and fades. Hair in the black community is art itself. And I got me you know my cornrows right now, so you already know. <laughs> A lot of Don't call them cornrows. I hate that they get called cornrows. I always hated that when I was younger. That's why I didn't get them because it just made me, it just sounded so weird, but she 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 got it she got it. low income black neighborhoods in conjunction with the vietnamese community have popularized the idea of having long blinged out acrylic nails what was once seen as ghetto and ratchet is now essentially just pop culture and what you can see a lot of people rocking and you have to thank the black community as well as the Vietnamese community for that, making nail art more accessible to more people. And we can't forget about the ways black people have influenced fashion through R&B and hip hop. Hip hop fashion is essentially modern day streetwear, from baggy clothes to- That's a, that's one thing I do love about nerd shit because because I was into hip hop also and rapping shit and watching my dad and all the arts that he messed with, like they're, they're, you know, just them dressing and shit and being in the fashion. Like I got in the fashion really early. And so as I was getting older, like I started blending the two. And you, like I got folks from back home and shit that like, will tell you now, like I always wore anime shits and stuff, stuff like that. But like now that like, and it's another thing I hate, but I love it too, that like big companies and I and I get like credit to like people like Quavo and shit, like they take the anime shit and and put it into the fashion. Like Kanye, like Kanye really started a lot of that shit too. Kanye was all all into that shit. But like how he would how you could take and 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 Pharrell. Pharrell is like the fucking number one icon when it comes to like anime fashion shit. But to take the an the anime aesthetic of some shit, and especially like if you were an anime nerd and you would just watch 90s anime, them niggas was dripped out, bro. Them niggas had swag for days. Bro, just go look at any JoJo character, bro, from the 80s to the early 2000s. Even now, them niggas is clean as fuck. They was getting modeled after Prince, all types of niggas, bro. And then when you look at like Yu Yu Hakusho, man, the whole... Bro, Yusuke and the gang stay with a fresh ass fit to beat your ass in, bro. Come on, bro. Like for real, the the nigga anime always had to drip. So when that, I always seen that shit, and I used to mimic that shit. Like that's where I got my style. That's what I was like mimicking. I was trying to mimic that with hip hop, bro. And now that like the sh the two actually blended together and mesh, bro, I'm living a dream now. I'll be getting fire-ass anime hoodies and shit. Like, look at this. Like, bro, like, fucking... Like, my jewelry is a fucking Gengar, bro. Like, that shit is crazy. Like, my main pendant that I did it with is a fucking Mew chain, bro. Like, that shit is crazy to think about that we live in a town to where I can be iced out with Mew around my neck. With a Deku hoodie on. And some Majin Buu shoes on, bro. Like, Adidas made the Dragon Ball Z shoe line, bro. Crocs got the whole fucking Demon Slayer line, bro. Oh, uh, fucking Reeboks just made a Yu Yu Hakusho. No, not a Yu Yu Hakusho. A Hunter Hunter sneaker line. Reebok. Nigga, we lit, bro. If you a nerdy nigga, bro, you live, you eating good right now, y'all can. And that's why I be getting mad, bro. When I be seeing busty, nasty, dirty ass fucking anime niggas with no drip, bro. We got all the drip in the world now, and you still can't dress, nigga. You chose this life, bro. You chose that, bro. Ain't no excuse, bro. You could get a fire ass anime hoodie and some gray sweats, bro, and you will be, bro, bitches to be on your dick just like that you'll be amazed like uh, with a fire ass hoodie with a fire ass arts bro and you ain't gotta go to primitive and shit that i'll be bro i still shop at target bro they still be having fire ass graphic tees and shit with the nice cotton ass t-shirt bro i'm trying bro i'm putting you on game right now i'm trying to tell you bro go get you a fire ass shirt from target 
and walk to the side and get you some fire ass joggers or some shorts. And not none of them jean jorts, shorts, whatever the fuck they call. Not none of that lame ass, none of them cargo pants, not none of that shit. Get stop. I don't care how many pockets they got, nigga. Get out of that shit. Go get you some go get you some dad shorts. I I'd rather you wear some back basketball shorts with a fire ass graphic tee. Bruh, I swear, bruh. Tell me if I'm lying, bruh. Trying, I'm putting you on game right now, bruh. We 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 living too good to be getting all these fire ass clothes for you to still be dressed and bummy. Now I understand you may just you know say something that you you ain't gotta put that shit on all the time. But when you finna go somewhere, put that shit on, my boy. Put the shit on, my boy. It's no excuse no more. Bro, listen, this is why this this is why this is why I started taking dresses seriously, bro. I had a homie, bro. He was in the clothes and fashion all the shit. And he from he his family from New York, so he always was like into the, you know, New York, the Mecca, this, that, and the third, blah, blah, blah. Fuck all that. Anyway, one day he I I had to do I had to do something. I think I had a DJ, I had a rap show or something. And I called him like to let me borrow a shirt or something. And nigga just got on my ass he said you ain't got no clothes you ain't got no shoes bro you ain't got no shirt to wear bro what you doing bro he dogged my ass bro ah and we young too this ain't like no bro i'm like 18 19 bro like fresh broke college nigga bro but i chose to go to school this nigga chose to work and shit so he had he was making him some money. I ain't get my little scholarship check check to the end of the semester and shit. And this nigga, bro, dogging my ass, bro. He dogging me, bro. Like sitting there, like you ain't got no shirt. What you doing with your money? You ain't got no, bro. You ain't got no bitches. He, bro, li nigga, literally, like, bro, you ain't got no bitches, bro. How you gonna do this, bro? How you gonna do all that? You, you DJ and she ain't got no clothes to wear. And he hung up the phone on me. I said, I never, I, and this is supposed to be my bro, locked in, solid. Anything I need, he got me, bro. We, he was crazy, though, when we was younger. We used to wear each other's shoes and all types, bro. We used to do, bro, that was supposed to be my dog, bro. And I had this show, and he did me. Dirt, that's when I, that's when that nigga changed, bro. I should have known then. We, we ain't cool no more, bro. Don't fuck with me no more. It is what it is. I should have known then how he did me that day. That shit fucked me up. So I, ever since then, I was like, I'll never let another nigga talk to me like that ever get in my life. I got my, bro, I got my clothes A1 ever since, bro. Ever fucking since. I swear to you, bro. And now that I got the jury, can't no nigga tell me shit. And I ain't even want to buy the jury, but y'all know that story. Niggas don't take you seriously with that. So fuck it. Almost fucked the video up. The sneaker culture, chains, Tims, windbreakers, bucket hats, and even the Y2K style, which is coming back now. That's another thing that's crazy. Black people have also been at the forefront of activism. From Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass to Marsha P. Johnson, Angela Davis, Audre Lorde, Malcolm X and MLK, to Angela Rye, Colin Kaepernick, Tarana Burke, and the women who formed Black Lives Matter. There's just so many names. Historically and in present day, black faces have been at the forefront. I wouldn't have added the women that, add, that did the Black Lives Matter. They, uh, it sucks. Like, the movement is positive. Them motherfuckers are awful, though. They stole all that money and just went shopping, bro. They took all that money that got donated and this, that, and the third and went ham. I mean, you can't knock that hustle, but damn, bro. You could have you at least gave the, the black community a little bit of that chunk of change. They used it, bro. Hike, bro. Man, it's forefront of fighting for civil justice and civil rights for everybody. Our community has been committed to civil liberties, equity, and fighting to be seen as human. And when it comes to black achievement, black excellence is everywhere, even if you may not even know it. We make strides from everything from activism to education to athleticism to fashion and STEM. And I think the whole idea of black boy joy and black girl magic is rooted in celebrating us, the ordinary and the extraordinary. It's acknowledging the struggle 
while still finding joy despite it. Celebrating blackness and black excellence is having pride in who we are, the many forms we come in, all we've been through, and the magic that still manages to persist. And so that's how I would describe black culture. So just by taking a look at this list, you can see how much of black culture has truly transformed pop culture and has just been influential to the way we live life today. Black culture is pop culture, and especially as it comes to the arts. And so being cool is definitely something important in a lot of different communities or feeling that you fit in. But when you're black, particularly, I think the stakes are even higher for us to feel like we fit into the standards of blackness. And nerdiness directly contradicts that. The hardest part about being a black nerd was that I didn't fit in with anybody. Not to mention before the internet, there were only two black nerds, me and this guy. And in the black community <laughs> specifically, anything associated with nerdiness is oftentimes simultaneously associated with whiteness, which for obvious historical reasons is also seen to be a threat to blackness. It seems like if you act too black, then you won't fit in with the white kids or the other kids that aren't black. And if you aren't black enough, then the black kids don't see you as black. They don't accept you as who you are. I think when right, black people imply right. that you're not black enough, what they're really saying is that you don't seem to exhibit stereotypical black qualities or be well versed in what we generally understand to be black culture. Proximity to whiteness essentially seems to make you less black. And all Bro, she just said something and that just made me think black folks hate stereotypes, but they use stereotypes to make you fit in. And it's just like, you don't like stereotypes, but if this black person don't present those stereotypes, they're not black enough for that shit. Like when I was younger, another thing I got picked on was cause I talked proper. And living in Montgomery, if y'all know how Montgomery niggas talk, that's a, that, that is a fucking different world. Them niggas worse than fucking Atlanta niggas, bro. But because I didn't have no, my mom was an English teacher. Let that sink in. My mom, bro, my mom was a fucking English teacher, had an English major, all the degrees in English. She had that shit. So when I, when I started talking, she would like get mad, like, Bro, my I remember my auntie would be, would be so upset how my mom got on to me when I was like studying and doing shit. She'd be like, "He's a fucking kid!" Like, but she would the little pronunciations of words that I would do, she would get on to me about it. And so if I pronunciated a word differently than how it was supposed to be pronounced, I got on to. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is crazy to think about now. Now that I'm, like, older and shit, looking back on it. I got thank her for it, but, like, I got talked about for it because I knew how to pronounce my words. That shit is, that shit is, like, baffling. Like, bro, when you start healing and, like, going through your trauma and shit, that shit be crazy, the shit you be finding out about, like, little shit. Obviously, this mentality comes from a place of ignorance because there's not one way to be black. To be black is to be black. Race has nothing to do with your personality or cultural competence. But I really want to look further into this idea of not being black enough, specifically from the perspective of being a geek or a nerd. So I have a couple examples to share with you guys. The first example is a blog post from a blurred who basically just talks about her experience with the term and her experience having her nerdiness essentially equated to whiteness. So it's a bit of a long excerpt, but I think it's pretty good at explaining this. So it reads, I didn't grow up with the term blurred. I just lived it. Outwardly, I blended in nicely while living in Queens, New York. That is until I opened my mouth. I would hardly shut up about my love for Sonic the Hedgehog, role-playing, and watching anime. I hadn't realized that these things were more mainly associated with things white people do, until one day I was told, because I enjoyed rock music and role-playing, that I was not black. I still have to ask myself if I'm black enough to even write about being a blurred. If you're a nerd, it is Bro. considered a violation of culture. 
a betrayal. It's acting white. Growing up black and nerdy was intimidating. I was made to feel ashamed because of the things that brought me joy. So I did what any person would do when getting attacked. I hid. I only let my nerd flag fly high when I knew it was safe, when I suspected that I wouldn't be ridiculed for it. When I could hey, find a safe nerd it, space man. to converse, it was primarily populated with white men. I bro, yeah. And they would get mad because I hung out with the white kids. It's like, bro, they don't judge me. Like, bro, yes, bro. God, yes, bro. And that's why I commend my white fellas that fuck with us. When they fuck with us, they fuck with us, bro. They don't judge. They let us be, and they indulge in that shit. And a lot of times, if you find one of them cool white folks, they probably not even into the shit. But they'll get into it just because you make it sound dope to them. Them be the realest ones, bro. Them be the, bro. One of my friends got destiny because I couldn't shut up talking about it, bro. And that nigga fell in love with that shit, bro. Just, uh, bro, like, you can make some, you can make some sound so sweet, bro. I guess that's why I was good at selling shit, bro. But. Bro. I had a few female friends, not many of whom were persons of color, who were geeky or nerdy. But black people, no matter the gender, made fun of me for being black and nerdy. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, she's spinning. Well, we own some right now. Well, she getting to the good part. We getting deep. And we can see this in several examples throughout media where black nerd characters are oftentimes the butt of the joke or made to be the less black character or somebody betraying black culture. If you check out this example from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Carlton Banks and Will Smith's character are trying to get into this of uh, black fraternity and they essentially accept Will but reject Carlton because he didn't fit the mold of what they thought a black person should be. I'm not accepting no prep school Bell at Bread sellout into my fraternity. You think I'm a sellout? Why? Because I live in a big house where I dress a certain way? Or maybe it's because I like Barry Manilow? You uh, mean Barry White, y'all? <laughs> Being black isn't what I'm trying to be, it's what I am. But when you take a step back and think about it and examine all the things. Bro, when that episode spoke to me when I was younger, bro. Like when I watched that episode, and I used to see it all the time growing up, and I never like, you know, I, you know when you watch this stuff, you just watching this, watching it, you know what I'm saying? But when I really watched that episode, I I think I was like, uh, I think I was just getting to high. This is like I was either leaving middle school, getting to high school, or I was like in high school, but like. Uh, let me just get to the point. So that episode, I, I, the, I, when I really sat there and watched that episode and understood it, that's when I, I never hid who, what I, who I was and how I was. Like I knew, like I couldn't, I knew I couldn't, you know, nerd out in front of certain people or talk about certain stuff around other people and shit like that. But when I, that episode made me realize that. I am who I am and fuck who don't think so. Like my dad always like told me to like, bro, fuck them. Like you, you one of the coolest kids I know. Like, I don't know, man. I come in my dad for like instilling in us like that. First of all, that fuck you and fuck the world. But second off that like, you know, being yourself is cool. Like being yourself is like, you know, like I, I I don't know if he was just talking shit, you know what I'm saying? You know, just doing his thing as a father, but like he made me comfortable. So like when I was around him, I was always myself, but he didn't really know like when I was out and public stuff, it kind of like contained everything to maneuver through life. But when I watched that episode, that made me be like, man, fuck like whoever feels the type of way about me. Like I can't change myself. I like what I like, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it made me feel proud about like all the stuff that I was into and you know, all the stuff that I am, like everything that made me me, like it made me feel like I belong. And then like eventually like I would meet, you know, people like that in the world. And that's why I love the internet. Like I grew up on the internet and shit. That's why I love, you know, forums and like um, Twitch or fucking, uh, 
Facebook groups and shit like that, c- I connected with so many people around the world through streaming or uh, going to, like, cons and shit, bro. It's so dope when you finally go somewhere and you feel like you belong and, like, this is, like, your, uh, what's the word? This is your, uh, your pack. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel at home, at home, like, with my brothers and stuff, like, my, like, I'm the only, I'm the black sheep of the family, obviously, but I don't feel like the black sheep of the family. Like, when I'm with my brothers and sister and shit, I don't feel out of place. You know what I'm saying? You could tell I'm the black sheep when we're all dressed, because, like, they may have on, like, Gucci and Polo and all this extra shit, and I got on fucking some anime shit. You know what I'm saying? But we all look like a unit. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's so funny, like, how when we're all together, like, how we all look. But, like, I don't feel out of place. And that's one thing I commend that, like, I was blessed with the family that I got. You know, my extended family, that's a whole other story. I do feel out of place with them niggas. But the family that's under the same roof, don't. But that episode is very impactful and I and I and I wish every black nerd or black female nerd black male nerd whoever if you just feel out of place to watch that episode and truly watch that episode cuz Carlton went through a lot just to prove to them niggas that he des- deserved to be in that fraternity and you could do so much to be accepted by somebody and they still want to accept you no matter what you do and that's and i realized that like you it like you could try to hang out and do everything that everybody else wants you to do to feel accepted and they just they don't give a fuck if they got whatever they got in their head to make you not feel welcome it's always gonna be there no matter what you do bro and so you just need to find where you belong and i took that with everything with women with fucking friends, life, job, go with wherever who fucks with you, go with who likes you, and who likes you, that's where you need, that's where you belong, whoever fucks with you, that's where you belong, who, who wants to hang out with you, that's where you belong, who checks in on you, that's where you belong, bro, them the people you need in your life, all that extra shit, stop worrying about that stuff, and, hey, man, that episode golden for real, Black culture is known for popularizing and all of the things Black people are oftentimes recognized for and applauded for, not very often are they things in more nerdy fields. So no wonder there's such an internalized marginalization of Black people who possess more nerdy qualities or characteristics. That person doesn't really seem to fit the mold of what we have imagined the Black American to be like. And this prejudice isn't just from outside forces, like this is also happening within the black community itself. So why is this? There are a couple speculations. For starters, there's the social pressure of what it means to be black, and that does not mean being nerdy for the most part. People take race and ethnicity with so much pride that if you're excluding people who you don't feel like fit whatever ideal you have for your race or ethnicity, you don't realize how bad it makes them feel. And it doesn't help that we don't have a lot of like role models or highly visible influences in fields that seem more nerdy. Um, and again, that definitely is changing. Just because black faces aren't at the forefront or may not be the faces of, you know, nerdy fields or endeavors, that does not mean that we are not out here making strides because we definitely are. But it, our black faces shown in these endeavors are definitely not as commonplace as they should be. And we might not have as much exposure to it as a kid, quite frankly, as much as we do like rappers and entertainers and athletes and all those types of things. Also, blackness and competence in black culture is also seen as a status symbol. That's why you see how all these white kids from the suburbs and all these white kids on TikTok <laughs> trying to be like us, act like us, because it's a status symbol. It makes you cool. It makes you trend. Trying to be black makes you trend. <laughs> I think insecurity is another reason some people within the black community perpetuate this like not black enough idea. 
In this world, you can get made fun of for possessing stereotypical traits of your identity group, and you can get made fun of for not possessing those traits. So taking this into the context of race, you can be made fun of for being too black, and you can also get made fun of for not being black enough. So not that it's right, because honestly, this is just, you know, sharing more feelings of unworthiness, but putting someone else in a box could be a way that some black people can like process the feelings of not enoughness, if that makes sense. I don't know if I explained that very well, but I'm gonna share another clip from Madison Brown's video. Y'all should just go watch it because it's really good. So she explains this pretty well. I think deep down it comes from a place of insecurity maybe because they know that who they are is seen as sometimes ghetto or uneducated simply because they're just being themselves. And because to them, I have some sort of adjacency to whiteness that it it fucks with their head because maybe they think that because of the way that I am, then I will be more accepted by the white man. And being seen as more palatable <laughs> white to white man. society has obvious social and professional benefits. And then finally, it can also be financial disparities. As I said earlier, poverty has disproportionately affected a lot of black communities in America specifically, but also in other countries. Science and engineering and like STEM, more technical fields are expensive. And if you don't have the financial resources to send your kids to specific schools or to buy certain equipment so that they can pursue the this, it may seem like out of reach for some black kids. Again, that's not to say it's not possible, but that definitely could be a factor. So all of these perceivably nerdy or white characteristics, all of these things is not how we have internally been conditioned to uh, recognize the role that black people play in the world. And so due to this internalized contradiction between blackness and nerdiness, the term blurred was born. So why blurred? I think blurred.com explained this pretty Blur. eloquently. Com. Uh, one of the writers writes, Representation matters. Quite simply, blurs were not traditionally shown in the media and have had little representation in pop culture. Not only that, but when we combine the intersection of African American and nerd culture, sometimes we see or describe things a bit differently. Blurs tend to add their own bit of flavor into the mix when talking about all things nerdy. Calling yourself a blur doesn't mean you want to separate from anything. It only means that you are telling the world that you want to still identify with the part of you that makes you black. And this is why we have things like Blurred Con and other communities for like nerd subcultures, such as the black- Hey man, Blurred Con got beef with the black community. How they gonna get at white girl? The blur, she got, what she get the, the award at Blurred Con? And she didn't even make her costume and stuff, but man. They trying to take blur from us, y'all. <laughs> black girl gamers, black girl nerds, sugar gamer, I need diverse gaming. I will say the blurred identity is also pretty similar to the quirky, awkward black girl or the quirky, awkward black boy trope, if you're familiar with that. Or even the idea of being called an Oreo, being black on the outside, but white on the inside. Thanks. And the fact that all of these different archetypes basically exist to categorize black people who may not feel like they fit into the mold or the stereotype of blackness. And if you are interested in learning more about these tropes, these videos up here are very good and worth the watch. And of course, like all my other sources, they'll be linked in the description below. If you don't normally look at my sources, I would really recommend watching them or taking a look at them for this video because there's a lot of really interesting movies and shows and videos that I watch. So. Be sure to check that out. So as time progresses and as society progresses, more black people are starting to embrace this idea that blackness is not a monolithic experience with terms like blurred or the quirky, awkward black girl or black boy. However, not all black people are fond of this term because it seems like another way to sort of categorize black people further and put ourselves into more categories or groups, which is definitely an understandable perspective. But the difference is terms like blurred or the quirky, awkward black girl or black boy was directly created by black people to embrace the fact that the black experience is diverse and multifaceted. It allows black people to be whatever the hell they want to be. In the words of Donald Glover. Because whiteness is blankness. Is because they look at it as a blank slate. Like when you come in, you can be anything. Like when I walk in, even if I have a bow tie, they might be like, "He's is he Muslim? 
They're not going to do that with their identity. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. white people are a blank slate. And because whiteness is seen as a blank slate and white people are generally understood to be more nuanced and can be more complex coming into the world, that leaves more concrete boxes of what everybody else can be. And although our understanding of blackness is definitely changing, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done both internally and in the media to expand our perspective and horizons of what black people are and what black people can be. And until we can exist in a society that sees black indigenous people of color as complex, nuanced, and you know, comp layered beings, until we exist in a world where black culture is being more accepting of a diverse black experience and black people with different interests and different paths. And until this ideal time comes, terms like blurred and other archetypes will exist to include people who may not feel like they fit into the social norms of their culture. And so that's how blurred came to be. That's the video. <laughs> um, I'm off script now, but I essentially just wanted to make this video because um, I've always struggled with identity growing up. I think everybody struggles with that, but uh, growing up specifically as a black girl in a predominantly white upper middle class suburb, I've definitely been told my interests are white before. Even though I seem very like racial justice warrior now, when I talk a lot about blackness and I seem very proud of my blackness, it's definitely been a journey to get here. And so I really just felt led to talk about identity and the black experience and my experience growing up black in different communities. The world's gonna tell you that you're not black enough for various reasons. And so I hope this can be an affirmation to any black folk out there um, that you are enough, you were born enough, you are black yes. enough, and yes. you are enough simply because you are. So yes. yeah, you don't gotta prove nothing to nobody. Yes. Keep doing you. And honestly, showing up authentically is a revolutionary act. So my concluding thoughts, I actually have an audio recording that I think kind of sums it up pretty well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play that. So I hope this video kind of helped you to better understand the nerd caricature, the nerd archetype, uh, black culture and its vastness, um, and kind of where these two identities conflict. I never felt like I truly fit the nerd stereotype perfectly, but like I've definitely felt not black enough because of things that I was interested in. And so that made me kind of not want to talk about my experiences or my interests in things that seem to be nerdy, even though I don't necessarily, didn't necessarily consider myself a nerd, or also because the things that I didn't have knowledge in, the different black things that I'm supposed to know about. Let's also black people hold each other accountable when we see people um, projecting these harmful beliefs that the black experience is monolithic. What did I fucking tell y'all? Hold folks accountable. Oh, she spit, bro. She on it right now. She, man, she spit bags right now. Feed it facts, boy because yo the world already does this to us like we need to really yes. stop doing this to ourselves yes. um and the world would honestly we would be able to achieve more when we uplift each other and aren't belittling the worth of our own community and so again our enemy is white supremacy <laughs> it's not each other and so uh yeah i just want to create a space where people can feel heard and seen and um enough so comment below about your experience with nerdiness or blurtiness. I would love to engage in a civil conversation. What did you learn today? What do you want to take away? What have you learned about yourself? I would love to know. Leave a comment below. You hear them bars though. Okay. Honestly, my next project, just forget these video essays. I'm gonna drop a rap album. Um, mixtape <laughs> coming this summer. Yeah, that's all you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye y'all. Yeah, uh, I post behind the scenes video. Okay, yeah, she did that. Uh, let's give her let's 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 give her a subscription, y'all. Cause that was that's that was yeah, yeah, that was fire. Uh, YouTube man, if y'all fuck with that video, let me know in the uh, comments and stuff. But uh. I think I got I got I got my shit off throughout the whole video so hell and 
she she wrapped it up perfectly nice. It was it was epic. That shit that's I mean, hey man, hold everybody accountable. And then like like she said at the same, at the at the end of the video, man, black black blurs, be yourself, man. And a lot of us nineties, early two thousand babies walk so y'all can run and flourish, bro. Do not hide yourself. Like if y'all grew up in the world we grew up in, man. I'm so happy y'all get to live in y'all truth and it's cool and it's acceptable and y'all don't get shunned. It's y'all probably still get talked about and stuff, but it's not as bad as it used to be. So be yourself, bro. I'm so happy. I'm like overall I am happy that the world is more accepting for um uh, you know other uh unique uh Damn, what I'm trying to say. I do. I I am happy that the world accepts like different things as part of blackness. You know what I'm saying? Different uh, just other like. Damn, I can't even get my words together. It's in, it's in my head, but I can't say it. It's fucking four fifty in the morning with this video, but uh. I don't know. It's more acceptable, I guess. I'll just leave it at that. I'm just happy it's more acceptable to be into um I guess a wide range of fucking um not identities, but like There's different stuff on damn, I can't even think like fucking like you know, I'm just uh I'm just say it as basic as possible. I am happy that, you know, black folks in general accept, you know, the anime, the game the gaming, the video games, the the like in different genres of music, the reading comic books, you know what I'm saying? Like I praise that the MCU blew up and did what it did what it did. So like comic book nerds like me, bro, I used to go to books. I mean, every Saturday to play Yu-Gi-Oh and read comic books with the homies, bro. Shit like that. That's what I'm saying. Like different things in life is more acceptable under the black umbrella. Umbrella. Awkward, trendy, you know, just things that you're into. And I'm glad that like it's more acceptable now, and people don't have to be ashamed. Oh what they like anymore you know you still gonna have get the bullies and folks that pick on you but at the end of the day like you can find you a nice niche group of friends and flourish without being called the oreo and all this extra shit you know what i'm saying so i'm gonna leave it on there y'all like comment subscribe uh, appreciate y'all all the views i appreciate everybody that be commenting too on the videos and stuff I know this one's not gonna get too many views. Like when I try to, when I stray off the beaten path, I, you know, these views dip. But I wanted to make this video too, since y'all, some of y'all think I don't do original content. But anyway, um, yeah, I see y'all in the next one.